Good morning, everyone. Welcome to devotional service. It's lovely to see all of you this morning. We had a wonderful um, set of pieces presented to us, uh, starting off with uh, the orchestration of course, Christmas Joy by Sandy McClare. And that was followed by Ring Out the Merry Bells. And I think you agree with me, that was quite compelling. It was a wonderful rendition. And uh, we really enjoyed, that was by Leonard Gordon, A. Gordon. The youths could not be outdone. They've just uh, told us, God, tell it on the mountain. And uh, that is by Harry T. Uh, Bellow. We now have an opportunity to join our voices together. We want to back up, of course, what the choristers have started. And as a grand choir, join our voices together and sing CGS 664. That will be our first congregational song. Let's take verse 1, verse 4, and verse 5. Verse 1, verse 4, and verse 5. And this morning, Brother Victor Ido is our congregational song leader. God bless you all. are full of joy today, we have found the golden way, its light is shining. Forty-nine. We sing verses 1, 3, 5, and 6. Verses 1, 3, 5, and 6. Hymn number 49.
We sing verses 1, 2, and the last verse we sing, verse 3, we sing standing after which we shall be led in prayer. See amid the winter snow. Verses 1, 2, and 3. The third verse we sing standing after we shall be led in prayer. Our heavenly Father, Amen. King of glory, yeah. the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the Prince of peace. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for another grace yes. of waking up this morning. Amen. It is a miracle. Amen. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. Jesus, accept our thanks. Amen. Our heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. For everything you have done for us. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the salvation of souls. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the soul that you have sanct sanctified. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the soul that you have saved and sanctified and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost Amen. and fire. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for those that are sick you have healed. Yes. Father, accept our thanks. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone. Yes. We thank you for every challenges you have brought down. Lord, I set our thanks. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our internet all days. Lord, we praise your holy name, Lord. Amen. Father, I set our thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this season. Heavenly Father, this, the reason for this season is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, because Jesus Christ he was born in Bethlehem. And if Jesus Christ had not been born, our faith, our garden here will have been in vain. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for everything you have done. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are here this morning. Lord, we want you to come down yeah. with your mighty power. Yeah. Oh, Lord, come down. Yeah. Jesus, come down. Yeah. Holy Spirit, come down. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to go home blessed. Yeah. Father, come down. Yeah. Jesus, come down. Yeah. Every stony heart this morning, Lord. Oh Lord, break them down. Give them the flesh out. Heavenly Father, as your word will be going out this morning, Lord, we want you to come out with power, with authority, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Your son that you're going to speak through today, Lord, fill him Amen. with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fill him with oxygen from Nabah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that today yeah. we won't leave this place without being blessed. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you came to this world to redeem us. Yeah. And one day we want to see you in glory. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are still looking unto you. Father, come down this morning. Yeah. And at the end of this service, yeah. we want to rejoice. Yeah. For we pray in Jesus' name. Once again, we want to say um, a warm welcome to everybody. We appreciate particularly the coming together of our brethren from Coventry uh, and from Leicester. I know it's a bit to come out, but it's always a joy when we gather together in the house of God as children of God. So, yeah, it is nice to see everybody this morning. And in particular, also, we want to say welcome to our internet audience. Uh, it is a joy always when you join with us. And today we are webcasting from uh, the Apostolic Faith Church, um, Birmingham branch. Uh, as you watch us on internet, it will be lovely one of these days if you can pop in. Uh, we would love a warm welcome to be enveloping you. Uh, we are a family church, we are a community church that will enjoy your fellowship. We are located on uh, Monk Road um, in the area of Birmingham called uh, um, Ward End, B82TS. That will be lovely to see you. I know our Sunday school teacher uh, earlier on alluded to the technical glitches we had earlier on. We would want to apologize to our internet audience for that inconvenience. However, we are back on now, and uh, we have enjoyed uh, all those comments that have come through, and of course, Sunday school was quite engaging. God bless you. We thank God for the successful concert we had yesterday. Uh, the Christmas concert was wonderful. The renditions were quite gripping. And uh, we still want to continue praying for the concerts that are still ongoing in various locations. May God continue to bless uh, all this work that's being done through the singing and through the outreach program that's happening all across. And I know Coventry came in after Leicester, and there's quite a lot that God is doing in the hearts of men. And we want to pray that God will bring that to fruition in Jesus' name. Our welfare team is organizing an event called Jehovah Jireh. And uh, next Sunday, there will be some packages put out for us. Once these are ready, well, of course, on Sunday, we will know exactly where it's going to be. It's uh, a package that us as a family, as individuals, will go out, will grab one. Uh, we are doing our little that we can. God bless them. And, but uh, more so, we want to appreciate as this is the season of celebrating and exchanging Greek gifts and whatever else. Be sure to get yours. God gave us Christ Jesus. And we enjoy Jesus every day, don't we? We want to express that love as we exchange the little nices that we can. Uh, that will happen about 30 minutes after the service next Sunday, should Jesus tarry. Later on this evening at 5 p.m., we gather here for our Christmas concert, our long-awaited Birmingham concert. Uh, it will be lovely, and we know our internet audience will join us. I promise you, you will not be let down. And given all that has happened around all the other concerts, I'm pretty sure, I'm confident, I know we will not be let down. So please, be sure to join us at 5 p.m., and uh, God is going to bless you. Uh, midweek, however, we meet virtually on Wednesday, 7.30, for prayer meeting. And Friday, following on, we will meet uh, for prayer meeting also at uh, 8 p.m. And that is, that is um, midweek. Should Jesus tarry on Sunday, 
Sunday School for all ages will be at 10 a.m. And the devotional service, as we are having right now, we will have um, our devotional service at quarter past 11. And in the evening, we'll have virtual prayer meeting at 5 p.m. God bless you all. And uh, it will be lovely for us to rally around. I know everything has been happening uh, virtually, virtually, virtually. And of course, purely the reason is the nation and the world is in the grip of this pandemic. We want to continue praying that God will raise his finger and place a stop to it. However, as God will help us, we'll do the little that we can we social distance here and there. We have got sanitizers. We've got a station at the back. And on this side, we've got another station. Occasionally, please make it a habit, make it a practice. You go out there, you sanitize. Of course, by the grace of God, most of us here, we've got our masks on. I know how inconvenient it is. But however, we are doing the little we can to ensure we keep ourselves safe, we keep others safe. And of course, we continue to enjoy the services that we are enjoying in person uh, without any lockdown coming our way. And by the grace of God, we want to pray that there won't be any more lockdown. Amen. We will proceed now with the service of first special or holy night um, to be rendered as a male choir. Um, that will be followed by uh, our Bible reading that will be taken from John chapter 1 from verse 9 to verse 12 and that will be taken by Brother uh, Adeyemo. Our second special will follow on, O oh, wonderful love of my wonderful Lord and that will be taken as a duet and um, we'll then proceed on with the word of exaltation thereby, thereafter. I would want to encourage everybody of us, young and old, um, after the word of God, take a moment to pray. Take as much as you can to pray. I have this love in my heart. God answers prayer. And I have this joy in my heart. God answers prayer here. And I have this joy in my heart that God answers prayer wherever you're located. So our internet audience, take a moment to pray, particularly using the word of God. God bless you. We shall proceed on now.
Our scriptural reading for, for this devotional service is taken from the gospel according to St. John. We start reading from chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. That was the light. I start again from verse 9. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. 10. It was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name.
Shall we open our Bibles to John chapter 8? John chapter 8. Let's read together from verse 6 through to 12. John chapter 8, verse 6 through to 12. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they had continued asking him, he lifted himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn. Neither do I condemn thee. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again and said unto, unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life, the light of the world. And Jesus is the light of the world. And therefore our focus really is on Jesus. The season in which we are in, if only the world can know, that the focus is, should be on Jesus. Why Jesus? Because Jesus is the light of the world. You go around our communities. You go around our workplaces. You go around different venues. You go around different houses. What is typical, that uh, typical thing that you will see? You see wonderful decorations. You see beautiful decorations, but the centerpiece in all that is light. They find different sources of light. And I was thinking, just thinking deeply, what's the essence of light in all these decorations? It can be none other than the idea that the essence of light comes from God himself. The idea of light comes from God himself. We use light to light rooms. We use light to see what we do. We use lights to drive. High speed, low speed. We need lights to see our way. We need lights during the day to know it is daylight. We need light or the absence of light to know that it is night. So light very necessary. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. That was Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3. So right from the beginning, God, as it were, had the idea Forever, I want to be using light for different things. I want to be using light. So at the beginning, the world was without form, it was void, and darkness was ruling. And God said, let there be light. And things changed. 
When there is a light in a person's life, things change. I don't know if there is a difference in your life. If there is no difference, you have lived the same life ever since you were young. I want to give you advice today. You need to seek light. You need to have light in your life. If you go to Tesco, you go to whatever shop and you buy a light bulb or whatever you, that light you will buy, you will fit in your room, your car or whatever you, that light at some point will run out. So today I've got a special light I want to recommend to you. The light I want to recommend to you is Jesus. Why Jesus? Because Jesus is the light of the world. He's the light that will not run out. Is the light when you are in struggles, you will not run out. It happens in life that uh, when you come across usage as time goes on, things that are made of man will fail. If I was to be your light, I will fail you one day. There are many here so far I've said, I will meet you so, 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 such a time. And because of traffic or any other reason, I'll fail to make it. And the times I'll ring and I'll say, I'm really sorry. I can't make it. I'll fail you. There are different sources of light that will fail you. But this light of the world I am recommending today will not fail you. The woman who is in the context we are dealing with, the Pharisees were waiting to stone her to death. Because that was the law of Moses then. And for her, the system was failing her. Before she could even think of anything, the system of society back then, as good as God had put it in place, at some point, she had no chance. She had no option. She was caught in the act. Society will fail you. But thank God, on that fateful day, she met, and for some reason, as God would have it, the accusers dragged her to Jesus. I don't know what is accusing you today. I don't know what's making you guilt in your conscience today. Drag it to Jesus today. When she arrived at Jesus with the accusers, with all that we read, the greatest point I want to extract from there is, although the accusers failed her, the law of Moses could have failed her, because if she was stoned to death without looking to God for salvation, she was destined for hell. So at times even the system can fail us. But thank God that today we have dragged ourselves. And probably someone dragged you to church. It is a good thing that you have been dragged to church. But we want to take that extra step that you and I would step and we arrive at Jesus. When we arrive at Jesus, Jesus being the light of the world, he said to the woman, woman, I do not condemn you. Uh, go and sin no more. And today, this Jesus I'm recommending to you today, whatever is condemning you, when you go to Jesus, Jesus, I've been caught in the act. I feel sorry, or I don't feel great, or I have been let down, tell it to Jesus. And when you tell it to Jesus, you know what? In that sweet hour of prayer, you will say, I do not condemn you. Your sins have been forgiven you. That experience of being forgiven our sins by Jesus, who is the light of the world, we call it salvation. And today, are you saved? Are you saved? And we want to put ourselves at the same level. The one who was saved yesterday, five years, and one who is not saved today, 
to arrive at Jesus and say, is it well with me in the presence of Jesus? If Jesus was to stand right there and he is right here, will he give you a pass mark? Will he give the preacher the pass mark? The light of the world will forgive. Some of us, we have lost it. Let's be honest with each other. We, can have, we could have lost it. We could have backslidden. We could have fallen from grace altogether, totally flat down. And in our hearts, we're thinking, can I even go back to church? What will they say? Don't worry, brother. Don't worry, sister. When you arrive at Jesus, Jesus does not condemn anybody. We have the joy of, you know, when we look at each other, we can grade each other. Don't, do you agree with me? But when we arrive at Jesus, Jesus doesn't condemn anybody. The light of the world shines into our life. And when he shines into our lives, the reason of him shining into our lives is to dispel away darkness. To dispel away condemnation. What is it that's condemning you? What is it that is making you fall short? Thinking of darkness. What forms can darkness take in our lives that requires Jesus, the light of the world, to come into our lives? Perhaps someone here today, it may not be the case that you're fallen or you're falling short, you're backslidden. You know, in life, it is true, as human beings, we can be in a state where you just feel a void in your heart. A longing for something. You have a wife, you have a husband. You have children, you've got relationships, relations, you've got friends. And all is well. But in the soul, there will be a void. There is some satisfaction. You may be a millionaire. And you are lacking peace in your life. Darkness. At times, darkness may come in the form of confusion. Lack of progress. You're just stagnant. You're not making progress in life at all. You feel like you're not going anywhere. You're running from pillar to post. You are struggling to figure out the way. You have no direction, no sense of direction, no sense of purpose. And many times, I've heard this not too long ago, but you may think that I would have known this, but not long ago, I got to hear lots of people saying, and different programs saying, when somebody has spoken, they say, that is really dark. Someone says something, they express themselves, they'll say, that is dark. Or they're talking about someone, they will say, he has dark thoughts. They talk about a film and they'll say, there are episodes that are dark. In other words, humanity has a disposition of a nature of darkness, a fallen nature where... The conscience can have thoughts that are dark. You are troubled by sin. Very soon, by the grace of God, the year will come to an end. January will come round. And people will have the tendency of, I want to come up with a new year resolution. I want to be good. Children will say, I want to be good to mommy and daddy. A mom and dad will say, I want to be good to my husband, to my wife. I want to be good. I want to do different resolutions. But as nature would have it before long, those resolutions, we break them. We fail to meet them. Why? Because darkness has the propensity of making an individual to fail. God wants people to succeed. Jesus wants you and I to succeed. 
Lack of joy, genuine joy. Do you have joy in your life? Do you have happiness? People turn to alcohol, illicit drugs. They go for different substances in pursuit of joy and happiness. And some of the substances have a tendency to addict one to them. Unforgiven sins are a foundation for darkness. Colossians 2 verse 18 says, When you were dead in your transgressions, in the uncircumcision of your, flesh, of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. So the principal issue here that rules everything is sin. Is sin, is your, are your sins forgiven today? Are you forgiven? Jesus, the light of the world, as we saw in our example, he forgives. He forgave that woman. And I want to tell you one thing. I was a rugged boy growing up. I was found in my culture. If I was to spend time to explain to you how I was brought up, you would pity me. The things I was eating and drinking, you would pity me. To see, you, to see me dressed and well-mannered the way I am, it is the grace of God. I share the same sentiment as this woman who arrived at Jesus. Why am I saying this? No matter how bad your situation is, the light of the world, when you arrive at him, you tell him your story, he will set you right. And the beginning step of you being set right is having your sins forgiven. And condemnation will go away. So the lights we have in our decorations, we really need to knuckle down and go back to the foundation of it. The sense of it should be to remind each other that the light of the world can forgive sin, will forgive sin, will forgive you today, and we just have to tender our sins to him. Condemnation will go away. You may say, Brother Lazarus, you don't know how bad my situation is. There is no situation that is as bad as someone is stood ready to stone you, not to stone you to injure you and to leave you uh, incapacitated, but to stone you to kill you. The thief on the cross, hanging and knowing any minute now, I'm going to die. Turned to Jesus and said, Lord, please remember me. And Jesus turned to him and he said, today, today, that can be your lot, you know. Today, you can be restored. The light of this world, the light of the world can shine in your life again. And he will give you assurance that your sins have been forgiven. Verse 9, he said, he is the true light. That lighteth every man. So there's no one who is left. No matter your background. There is no excuse. Tall, short, young, old. We want to be sure today we all arrive at Jesus. We want to know that when we leave Jesus, we will not be condemned. The author Charles Austin Miles wrote, I was once a sinner, but I came. Pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given. The light of the world is shining into your life is a free service. If I go to Tesco to buy something or any other shop to buy some light, they will charge me, and rightfully so. But we can, when you come to Jesus, there is no charge. There is no charge. And listen to this, when Miles was writing, and he said, in the book it is written, Saved by grace. Grace means favor. God's favor. Without your expense. God's mercy. Without you doing anything. But just saying to God, I'm really sorry. Jesus, please forgive me. 
What are you going through in life? Oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the blood I am made whole. The beautiful thing about the light of the world, it makes whole the soul, the inner man, the inner person. However, when you step into that light, the light of the world has power to hear. Did you hear that? It may be an ailment that's blighted you for many years. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, he says, God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. God heals. Jesus heals. And right this moment, no matter what it is, it is a testimony once shared that in one of the concerts here in Birmingham, someone attended and had a cancerous growth on their face. And as the songs were going out, something happened to that growth. And then the person stepped away and said, God, uh, why do this to me to embarrass me to see something coming out? Not knowing that that was the healing on, from that day on, that growth was never seen again. Amen. God heals. Yes. Jesus heals. The light of the world said, come unto me, ye who are heavy laden. What is your burden today? We want to take it to the Lord. The light opens spiritual eyes to see the goodness of God. What are you going through as life experiences? And thinking of the season we are in, Isaiah 9, if we read from verse 2, he said, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them had the light shine. This light will shine to give you life. And particularly in as much as he blesses and gives us this life, this physical life, we can be assured he will give us everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever will. Jesus gives everlasting life. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Are you looking for something wonderful? I want to recommend you today. I know we always want miracles in our lives, and rightfully so. But the wonderful, the greatest and the first wonderful thing we need to ask for is salvation. I come back to it because today, when you walk out through that door, I pray that in your heart you be assured, I am saved. My sins are forgiven. I have the joy of eternal life. Should Jesus, the, the, from the trumpet, should the trumpet sound today, heaven is my home. Shall I ask you now? Are you saved? I never wanted to be asked that question, but look at me as God would have it. I never wanted anybody to ask me, are you saved? And I want to turn it around and say to you, are you saved right this moment? Jesus will do something wonderful in your life. We say the darkness, people will have lack of direction. We will lack, we will lack counsel. We will lack ideas. That is what darkness will do. But listen to this. Listen to this. The, the counselor, that is Jesus. He is what? The counselor. The mighty God. The almighty in other words, all power is invested in him. Everlasting father. Some of us fathers, mothers have passed on. But when you have Jesus, when you have God in your life, you have a father. You have a father you can turn to any moment, any time, anywhere, 
and ask, and you will hear you. And finally, because in this world there is no peace, darkness will bring fear, will bring hesitancy, will bring despondency, depression, and all sorts. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Do you have peace in your life today? He will forgive your sins today and give you peace with God. An everlasting peace. He will restore you if you are backslidden today. You have fallen from grace. He will sanctify you wholly and wholly, completely, without any part of your life being left behind. Can you imagine being, having a nature of God in you? Holiness, sanctification. It happens here. It happens through his word. He said, sanctify them, Father, through the truth. Thy word is truth. Through hearing this word of God, with faith in it, because the word of God says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I'm praying that today your faith has been stirred to say, this Jesus, the light of the world, I have darkness in my life. Shine in my life. Take away sin today. I am struggling with this. Jesus, the light of the world, shine in my life and make a difference. Is your situation like that today? Are you sick today? Are you sick today? I want to give you this assurance. Jesus is here to heal you. Even if there's nothing else that you can say, if you can say, Jesus, save me. And Jesus, I am sick right now. And at times you don't even need to tell him. What you know is paining you may be evidence that somewhere else is wrong. So God knows exactly where the problem is. We can tell him. There are songs, many songs that we sing. And there's one that says, Tell it to Jesus. We're going to have our song of invitation now. I want to encourage everybody as we sing heartily, we want to be thinking and we want to be praying in our hearts, using some of the words in the song. When we are finished and the congregational prayer has been given, we want to pray as much and as long as is possible. If it means you tarrying all afternoon, by the grace of God, do so. No one will disturb you. And you know what? The windows of heaven will open and joy will flood your soul. Brother Victor Edo will come forward and lead us now. God bless you all. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus.
Lord Jesus. Accept our thanks, Lord Jesus. And as many as have listened to your word, Lord, send your light into every heart this morning. As and we are going on our knees, Lord, solve all of our problems. Amen. Save souls this morning. Amen. Sanctify souls this morning. Amen. Fill with the Spirit, Lord. Amen. Fill with your Spirit, Lord. Amen. Heal souls Amen. that are sick this morning. Amen. Heal all bodies that are sick this morning. Amen. And at last, we want to go home rejoicing. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, child. 